Notice from the Foundation Records and Information Security Administration. By annual security update, item number randomization has been initiated. Until security update is complete, all files are locked. For emergency updates, please access Emergency Data Archival System, EDAS. By Maria Jones, Director, Reza. 5,648 items remaining. Item number SCP-001 targeted. One file identified with search term SCP-001. File SCP-001 selected. Initiate automated item number randomization. Scanning file for search term SCP-001. Item number. SCP-001. Object class. Euclid. Clearance designation. Level 5. Special containment procedures. SCP-001 cannot be secured or contained conventionally, and it is unknown if it may occur in the future. As such, a reactive approach is to be adopted. Said approach consists of the following chapters of the Forbidden City Convention. Prevention and minimization of the conditions conductive to the possible occurrence of SCP-001 or its equivalent via Forbidden City Convention Chapter 1. Management of organizational transition and unity following implementation of Forbidden City Convention Chapter 1 via Forbidden City Convention Chapters 2 and 3 respectively. The Forbidden City, Peking. The site in which the definition of SCP-001 and ratification of the Forbidden City Convention occurred. All above mentioned chapters of the Forbidden City Convention are not to be altered, unless via unanimous vote by the O5 Council. Description. SCP-001 is a successful occurrence of a CK-class restructuring scenario, which generated the current reality via alteration of a previous iteration of reality. Based on first-person accounts, SCP-001 occurred on the 1st of June in the year 1900 Anno Domini of the previous reality. The nature of SCP-001 is such that all causes, events, references and memories of Occult War 1, referred to as the Fifth Occult War in the previous reality, are omitted and replaced with various anomalous and non-anomalous parallels in the current reality. Foundation documentation regarding Occult War 1 is obtained from anecdotal accounts of 13 non-anomalous human beings who retain their memories of the previous reality, the a phenomenon coined as partial SCP-001 immunity. However, the mechanism behind partial SCP-001 immunity is unknown and will not be assessed, as decided by the O5 Council. Efforts to identify additional individuals, if any, with partial SCP-001 immunity, are on indefinite hiatus, as decided by the O5 Council. Below is an abridged list of events during Occult War 1, and plausible analogous events in the current reality. See Document OE for an expanded list. The Occult War 1 Phenomenon. Reference to the term Fifth Occult War. Description. A global war occurring throughout the 19th century Anno Domini, coalesced from three separate conflicts in Europe, the Napoleonic War, in East Asia the Divide Conquest, and in North America, the American Civil War. It is also notable for overt use of anomalous objects, leading to an IK-class global civilization collapse scenario. Analog in current reality. The conflict in northern China concurrent with the Boxer Rebellion, whereby members of the Brotherhood of Harmonious Fists allegedly utilized unnamed anomalous objects. Although usage of anomalous objects was minuscule, the O5 Council lobbied for the term Fifth Occult War to be the official referent among organizations with awareness of anomalous phenomena, and it was officially acknowledged by the Global Occult Coalition during the Foundation GOC Summit of 1953. The Cult War I Phenomenon Coronation of Napoleon I Description After his coronation, Emperor Napoleon declared Neo-Gnosticism to be state religion of France and Europa to be his patron deity. Analog in current reality Napoleon was crowned Emperor of the French in a ceremony presided by Pope Pius VII. No indication of Neo-Gnosticism or Europa worship is identified throughout Napoleon's regime, as CP 2515 is the only evidence suggestive of either. The Cult War I Phenomenon Divide Conquest of East Asia Description Most of East Asia was invaded by a civilization of humanoids called the Divites. Conquests began from the three northeastern provinces of the Qing Dynasty. Analog in current reality. No recorded analogous events. Records from SCP-140 maintained that the Divite civilization was destroyed by the Mongols in the 13th century Anno Domini. That being said, Divite artifacts have been found in the northern areas of the three northeastern provinces. The Cult War I Phenomenon. American Civil War. Description. A civil war between the United States of America and Confederate States of America. Both factions, among others, were supplied weaponry from a group named the Factory. The war gradually spread to Mexico and Central America, following relocation of the Confederate government. Analog in current reality. No factory involvement identified. The American Civil War did not escalate beyond the continental United States. The Cold War I Phenomenon. The Gepacification Campaign. Description. 
an initiative led by the Zareth anti-cult regiment to suppress the Thuggy, an organized gang known for harassing the Vitula, who were deemed to be co-belligerents with the British East India Company against divide incursion into India. Analog in current reality. Suppression mandated by the Thuggy and Dacoity Suppression Acts, 1836-1848 Anno Domini. Neo-Sarkic involvement confirmed. The Cold War One Phenomenon. Vatican Holy Office for Secrets and Prophecies. Description. An organization with awareness of anomalous phenomena, affiliated with the Holy See. During Napoleon's invasion of the Italian peninsula, members have taken refuge in South America, African Free State and the Middle East. Analog in current reality. The Artifact Section, the Department of the Vatican Holy Office, defected to the Italian Unification Movement, and formed the Foundation Precursor Royal Office for Christian Artifacts. The Vatican Holy Office eventually merged with the Foundation in 1964 Anno Domini. The Cult War I Phenomenon Establishment of the Mexican Empire Description Self-proclaimed as Semenahuac, a successor state to the Aztec Empire. Subjects of Semenahuac and media produced by them possess mimetic capabilities, which were used to subjugate neighboring states such as Texas, Guatemala, El Salvador and Honduras. Analog in current reality. The Second Mexican Empire was established via French intervention, and ruled by Emperor Maximilian I. He allegedly brokered a marriage alliance with an instance of SCP-2155-1 prior to his execution. The Cult War I Phenomenon. East Tennessee Convention. Description. Prayer Union elements based in East Tennessee seceded from the state of Tennessee, following the latter's involvement in the American Civil War. The resultant state of Franklin was admitted into the United States of America, and is the only state in the Union to separate from a Confederate state. Analog in current reality. The East Tennessee Convention ended with the occupation of East Tennessee by the Confederate Army. Instead West Virginia seceded from Virginia and remained a state following the American Civil War. The Cold War I Phenomenon. Taping Rebellion. Description. A rebellion in Divide occupied southern China orchestrated by a slave named Hong Rinkin, who claimed to have received divine revelation from a deity called Mother Dragon. It was suppressed by the Divites following the destruction of Taiping capital, Taisuking, formerly called Nanking prior to Taiping liberation, and massacre of the city's residents. Analog in current reality. A Type S event announced by SCP-089, which was resolved by an expeditionary force co-organized by Her Majesty's Foundation for the Secure Containment of the Paranormal and Estate Noir. Hong instead subscribed to a personal interpretation of Christianity, and renamed himself Hong Xuquan. No sarcic involvement identified. Nonetheless, captured taping subjects exhibit signs of mental maladies. Nanking was temporarily renamed Tain King, while controlled by taping rebels. The Cold War I Phenomenon. Tomb Massacre. Description. Systematic slaughter of about 150,000 ethnic Mongols in Divide occupied Mongolia by a Divide thrall. Reports indicated that said thrall possessed two bladed weapons and possesses unspecified regenerative abilities. The corpses of rebels were taken by Divite forces for unknown purposes. Analog in current reality. The Jindandao incident similarly involved a massacre of about 150,000 ethnic Mongols, although it was caused by the Chinese secret society Jindandao. The existence of Jindandao in previous reality cannot be ascertained due to limited sources. The cause and origin of SCP-001 are unknown and cannot be ascertained. It is unknown if SCP-001 or its equivalent have occurred prior to its known occurrence or may ever occur in the future. Additionally, it is unknown if SCP-001 represents a typical or atypical occurrence of a CK-class restructuring scenario. In the event that SCP-001 or its equivalent has occurred or will occur, it is speculated that a majority, if not all, of mankind and or sapient entities will have no recollection of them or the events prior to the moment of occurrence. It cannot be ascertained if partial SCP-001 immunity is applicable to future occurrences of SCP-001 or its equivalent. The definition of SCP-001 was finalized by the O5 Council in a 544 vote, and the Forbidden City Convention was ratified on the 7th of September in the year 1901 Anno Domini. Addendum 1. Excerpts from the Forbidden City Convention. The following organizations are to be dissolved and disavowed from their respective patrons, and their personnel and resources are to undergo a merger. Her Majesty's Foundation for the Secure Containment of the Paranormal. The State Noir. Zars Sears. Kaiserlich Deutsches Prüfung für Paranormal Angelogenheiten, KDPPA. American Secure Containment Initiative. Imperial Commission on Transgressive Occurrences. Royal Office for Christian Artifacts. Special Investigations Board, Council of the Dutch East Indies. Inner Africa Expeditionary Society. The Knights of the Military Order of Borgia e Aragon. Bureau of Omnum. Abnormality Institute. Zareth Anti-Cult Regiment. In their place, a unitary organization is to be established. 
The mission of this unitary organization is to secure and contain various anomalous objects in order to protect mankind from said objects. The referent for this unitary organization is agreed to be the foundation. The following alternative reference, i.e. institute, organization, organization and front, have been proposed and rejected. The aforementioned 13 organizations in which the foundation is formed from is henceforth designated as foundation precursor. Chapter 2. The O5 Council. The provisional executive administration of the foundation is to consist of an executive council composed of 13 individuals from each of foundation precursor. The aforementioned 13 individuals of this executive council were selected due to the following criteria. Leadership position in respective foundation precursor. Possession of memory regarding occult war one. Future members of this executive council are not required to possess both of the above mentioned qualities. The referent for this executive council is agreed to be the O5 Council, the following alternative reference, i.e. Overseers Committee, Level 5 Council and O5 Command, have been proposed and rejected. The function of the O5 Council is to facilitate initial transition from Foundation Precursors. Each O5 Council member is designated with a Roman numeral ranging from 1 to 13. Other organizations merged into the Foundation henceforth are to be denied representation on the O5 Council. Chapter 3. Groups of Interest. Organizations with awareness of anomalous phenomena that are not subsumed under Foundation control are hereby designated as groups of interest. The Foundation's default approach towards groups of interest is to pursue for their dissolution, termination and or assimilation of their personnel and resources. Addendum 05, 1-13, Succession Notary, SCP-001. File displayed is dependent on logged in 05 account. Verifying login credentials. Administrator override, code Howling Black Moon, identified. All files displayed. Welcome 051. To my successor. As the main editor of SCP-001, I have already written all that you need to know. After SCP-001, only the 13 of us knew of it, and we each stood at the height of our respective precursor organizations. Certainly, we were fated to take command and unite as the Foundation. As you can tell from the votes, there were two other alternatives for SCP-001 from our debate at Peking. They were ultimately voted down, but 2 and 12 left their marks on Foundation history. A pity that 12's limited command of the English language mustered a relatively vernacular term, as opposed to 2's in mine. Nevertheless, our initiative to speak up for the first 05 meeting will be remembered, and honored in almost every SCP article ever panned down. As for the Foundation's mission, I hope you and your colleagues continue our work. Welcome 05 to, to my successor. Santayana once said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Now, the world as a whole cannot remember the past. But does it repeat itself? Yes it does. During the Second World War, was there not another authoritarian dictator terrorizing Europe, and were the Chinese not massacred again? Of course, the details differ and America kept itself together throughout that war. Maybe that civil war occurred again in your lifetime, or will occur soon. Or that scaled-down skirmish was it. That still leaves the factory, but it is elusive. The product of an anomaly, should be an anomaly in itself. SCP-001, and this world are no exceptions. Piece by piece, this world is undoing and repeating itself. For every SCP not, if not, minimally, in our control, the process is ongoing. Until then, there will be chaos in this system. Once, I proposed that we guide the world back to its original state, but the others disagreed in favor of establishing tyranny. Ultimately, I acceded. There is no need to fight for my views. Nothing will change the process. No action is needed, except to wait. Or in short, Keter. Welcome 053. To my successor. Anomaly and normalcy both are subject to the consensus. Today's anomaly might have been yesterday's normality, and vice versa. The Scandal 9 uncovered is one such example. Trypetomania is no longer anomalous when the consensus decides it no longer holds water. Apply the consensus onto SCP-001. To the rest of the world, the occult wars do not exist. They exist only to those who know the anomalous. To those who know the anomalous, occult war 1 does not exist. Only 13 men imagined it to have existed, and that could have been SCP-001. However, the Council established our own consensus, and my opinion shifted to that when it was announced. More of us decided that we should establish order over all anomalous matters, instead of suggesting that we might be the problem. That would only be the first of the many consensuses reached, where we held influence over the world's conceptions of what is normal and what's not. Perhaps they resulted in the world you have grown up in. Thus, remember these. Consensus has value, and to be normal is to abide by the consensus. Welcome 054. To my successor. I'm one of the few who have fought in the front lines for both Fifth Occult Wars. I was gravely disappointed by the official Fifth Occult War, which is more accurately a skirmish. Those boxers simply can't compare to the Devites and Clockwork Worshippers. 
Even after turning almost every other agency and cult into her enemies, the Wainscot Society cannot compare to Total War. Perhaps it's the youthful bloodlust in me talking. It's a frequent quirk since SCP-001 happened, like during Peking when I voted for Chu's proposal out of impulse. I didn't care for his strange theory. I only wanted to fight on. So many sacrifices were made already, and I have made significant sacrifices as well. They cannot end in quiet days. But now, I'm walled and quietness will come for me. But you are here to fight on. Make sure that it does not end in quietness. Welcome 055. To my successor. You now know that the world was once averted from total destruction, due to an uncontrolled event. And because it is uncontrolled, we cannot guarantee if it can work again. Or if it would be in our favor. We should not rely on uncertainties like SCP-001. As a species, we have mastered and stomped on all the beasts and lands of the world respectively. Many crafts are now mastered by man, crafts that were once dreams. The restoration of the world is simply another thing to be mastered. If the world can rewind itself, we can do it too. By combining our resources, the magnum opus I envision can be reality. It might have been utilized already or construction is still ongoing, but SCP-001 will be irrelevant when it's ready. By our will, mankind rules eternal. Welcome 056. To my successor. We agreed that SCP-001 happened, but we don't know if it is the only time SCP-001 ever happened. Could it happen again? Must the world be near its annihilation for it to work? How much is it enough? What about trans-reality memory retention, a more accurate term than that ill-defined compromise? How does it work? Why only us? Can it be replicated? The list goes on. This unusual phenomenon's level of uncertainty surely necessitates quantification. Euclid is a reminder of that conviction, that more should be known about SCP-001. I suppose you would have that drive, cultivated by the Foundation's advocacy for scientific methodology. Containing and protecting cannot be the ends, knowledge is. But the majority of the First Council was too afraid to probe, and wanted to either abandon it or be preventive. Neither solves the problem, really. But you can do your part in solving it. Only you can see this, and have access to however little I can find out, so let that be your starting point. May you deliver results, and bring meaningful data to SCP-001. Welcome 057. To my successor. Officially, only 13 people were immune to SCP-001. But there is another, Gibral Mani. He was a consultant working for the Sublime Port, and we met when I took refuge in Constantinople due to Napoleon. He was most hospitable and we became fast friends despite the traditional enmity between Christendom and Dar al-Islam. We stayed with each other until the occurrence of SCP-001, where I find myself in Rome. In the current world, he managed to contact me, and I knew he remembered our friendship in the lost past. Meeting him, we spoke extensively about our memories of the Cult War I. I invited him to join me in an upcoming gathering in Peking with other men who remembered the war, but he politely declined. Gibral would rather defend his friends and clansmen, especially when we knew that the Middle East was in chaos then. He was skeptical towards one and his affiliation, but I could not blame his suspicion and respected his wishes. We parted ways since then. While I took on the title of 057, Gibral told me that he would return to Iran to gather allies for his cause. Just as he desired to protect his loved ones, my obligation is to the world, and I will defend it. P.S. Out of respect, I decided not to report to the Council about Gibral. I do hope that whatever organizations Gibral and the Council built in the end will not clash. We only wish to protect. Welcome 058. To my successor. As you can infer from the votes, there were three choices that ultimately led to SCP-001. One's proposal was really the only option. The others were stupid. Two essentially demanded us to be anarchists, while twelve assumed that we're a bunch of lunatics who need an oriental drug. No thank you to either. Most of us have been collecting anomalous objects to begin with, so the foundation is not much different from at least half of its precursors. As for the other half, the groups of interest will have everyone on the same page. You should have been doing this job for quite some time, so I expect you to keep it up. Welcome 059. To my successor. SCP-001 is the restructuring of reality, that's our consensus. Therefore, SCP-001 is reality bending. Two claim that reality will inevitably revert to correct the world, which is similar to Scranton's famous address on the topic. That being said, the latter insisted that reversion would be caused by the reality bender. It might be hard to control sapient beings, although some scholars believe that an engine may theoretically increase the probability. This prospect brings hope that the greatest known act of reality bending can be reverted. And when it happens, the world might revert to its previous state complete with my home in the African Free State, where the IK-class scenario did not really apply. It might as well be the previous world's only safe haven. That stability was lost after SCP-001, and I ended up working in a less hospitable setting. 
Even though I was not favorable to one's concept, the foundation is by far a better environment. It is also a good place to figure out how to realize Grandin's ideas, or at least invest in someone who can. Despite the money and subjects I have supplied, progress has been slow, and I have come to terms that I might never regain my losses. But you can, should SCP-001 happen again. You should continue the research in whatever way you can, because you shouldn't be like me and lose that which is yours. No one deserves that. Welcome 0510. To my successor. There were 13 groups that started the foundation, but not all of us stand equal. Take 12's Abnormality Institute, unendorsed by the king. But mine is similarly in decline. Our namesake was a witch hunter, but none of us actually met a real witch. An interest group was a more accurate description for the Borgianites of the late 19th century. If not for the memories I had of Occult War I, it would have remained that way. When one spoke of his great scheme, I have my doubts about fighting the anomalous. Each new generation of knights is a shadow of the previous, and it shows. In Occult War I, I remembered my knights being annihilated by Napoleon's clockwork soldiers. They were, and are, not ready for an occult war or any fight against demons or sorcerers. To submit to one's proposal would have meant gruesome deaths for them again. As their Grand Master, I would not send them to their deaths. When the vote was not in my favor, I briefly considered to not oblige to the terms of merger. That thought perished when I heard Aid's proposal to foster the unity of our newly dubbed Foundation. After that, I decided that my knights should at least die meaningfully against monsters, rather than as a sacrifice. All of us die eventually. Make it meaningful for those you hold responsibility over. P.S. All things considered, the resources from the other precursors did ensure that the last generation of knights will be better than the previous batch. Welcome 0511. To my successor. Congratulations for your service to the Foundation. I imagine that you have to climb the hierarchy to reach this position, unlike I who was granted this position by virtue of being the first. Your virtue must be astounding, unlike mine. During Occult War I, Kyoto fell to the Devites. Emperor Kmei and most of the council were killed. The Shogun and his agents only fled to Izo. I was among the few to have left Kyoto alive, but only because I feared for my life. I ultimately regretted my choices, and shame overtook me. Not even death liberated me. At least Emperor Kmei passed away in a less violent manner in this new world. This brought me to my vote at Peking, that we were hallucinating and the amnestics will cure us. Actually, I only want to forget. But the consensus was reached, and I am not allowed to forget. One insisted that we were fated to work together, and no one else shall stand alongside us in this council. At least it was tolerable, knowing that there were others like me. 3, 7 and 13 were very positive influences. My successor, I know not your colleagues in the 05 council of your time, but they shall be your sworn allies. Remember that. Welcome 0512. To my successor, I am sure you have heard of amnestics, and I am sure that it has been improved over the years. But the origins of amnestics, as a whole, is one of the many secrets of the Foundation. I will explain it. Amnestics was originally a secret of the main clan of alchemists. I married one of the clan's women to claim the right to make it. Originally, I wanted to cure myself of a series of disturbing visions which we now recognize as memories of the Cult War I. Before I could prepare the concoction for myself, Eleven contacted me and told me of similar visions. Soon, I gain knowledge that there are more men who experience the same vision, and they intend to meet at the capital. As a physician, it is my duty to see to everyone's recovery, and I attempted to convince them that it will be safe if we take no unnecessary action. Most of them disagreed with my views, so they insisted on a democratic vote as per the ways of the West. Needless to say, my views were rejected. But not amnestics. Five concluded that it is useful for it can revert memory, vaguely similar to SCP-001. Thus, amnestic stopped being a cure for the illness I had proposed, but to cure the common folk of any knowledge of the abnormal. Unfortunately, Matriarch Meng did not approve of the foreigner's theft of her clan's secrets, and the Ming clan was one of the earliest groups of interests we faced. Their fate were as the boxers were, although a junior or two might have escaped to Hong Kong with what little they knew of the formula. Please be of use to the council. But if you have earned this position, you should be of use. Welcome 0513. To my successor. SCP-001 said that only the 13 leaders of the precursors were immune from its effects, but that was incorrect. There were only 12. One and I have known each other for decades, and I owed him a lot. Naturally, when he asked for a tiebreaker vote, I obliged. He filled me in on the divide incursion in India to complete the deceit. When there were things I did not know of, I'd blame it on the British's unwillingness to be open with my regiment. I suppose you might be ashamed of the title by now, but if not for me, I dare say we might have three different foundations at war with one another. For me, it was an opportunity to be treated more seriously by the Europeans, and I took advantage of it. Since then, I have made many amends so that others will not end up in my situation. Thus, promise me that you vote according to your will, not by another's. Scan complete. 
40 instances of SCP-001 identified. Initiating random number generation.